I don't think AI pushes people towards isolation. I think people using AI without communities do. Having a community of people that can help you learn AI is so important. And I, I see that a lot with teachers. So when I'm training teachers, we're, if they're using tool AI tools, they're trying to figure it out and they're doing it alone, um, kind of in their own little isolated little bubble, they struggle and they're, they're frustrated. But when we get together and we have a community of practice, that's where things really shine. And as you said, that's where the magic happens, right? Yeah. So when they're building these, when they're learning these tools and they're learning together, they're building um, uh, their AI literacy, their AI awareness, and they're they're doing it faster and in a, and in a much more um, uh, robust uh, way. That's that's helping them learn learn the technology. And they're like, oh, hey, I didn't I didn't think about that. That's a great idea. You did that great thing. I'm I'm gonna steal that and I'm gonna do that too. And so we see that across the community of practice. So I. I I, I think that is that the isolation of AI is by choice if somebody's choosing to do that, but choosing to be in community can can make it so, so much better. And it can become essential for meaning and learning and making AI stick better. I think yeah. part of the isolation happens because AI anxiety is real and people feel like they're behind struggling alone. I know from how I set up my practice that because I realize that people are comparing themselves to other people when it comes to how quickly they're um, learning generative AI skills. So we have them do lessons individually online, and then we come together collectively as a group to discuss it. And it goes back to that's where the magic happens. But because they can learn at their own pace and not feel um, anxious or embarrassed mm -hmm. of where they are, and then they get the skills, you know, they have the time to get them on their own. And then we come together and talk about it. And then it's like, you can see the light bulb go off. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, that's so great because I think um, even if somebody feels like they're behind, uh, once you bring people together, they're like, oh, okay, pe there's other people where I'm at too. I'm not, I'm not behind. Yep. Technology has been making us more isolated since the early 2000s, right? This is nothing new. Algorithms have been designed to polarize us and to um, drive us into our own little bubbles. I think the real conversation we're having now is we're looking down the horizon and we can see that it's only going to get worse if we're not careful. And mm -hmm. I think it's on each and every one of us, everyone listening to this, anyone who's ever thought about this, to ask themselves, how do I put myself in community, right? It's easy when you're, when you're in a, easier when you're in a structured environment, four years of school, learning something for for your job but how about when you go home right i think mm -hmm. we're all craving community um i don't know if this is an ai solution it certainly is an ai problem but i think it's it's on all of us to seek out and join communities um before it's too late and there's the potential there for a ai product solution right because the isolating part about oh, ai youth right now is the product right it's the chatbot it's that that mode of interaction is what puts you literally like in a in a box, uh, not paying attention to the world around you. Right. Similarly, with social media, um, you know, the, there's positives where it is allowing people to stay connected to folks they wouldn't have stayed connected to for a long time. There's giant groups all over the world you wouldn't have been able to form otherwise. But also there's some product design features that are isolating. Um, so I think this is a big challenge to the tech community and the AI community, and especially the product designers and UX people in those communities to think about uh, how can you promote genuine community interaction using the power of generative AI. Um, so I'll just throw it up. That is my, my greatest fear with open AI and the big guys that mag seven, all kind of um, jockeying for position. Um, I don't let, I don't let the AI take any of my data. It actually lives in a box where I'm running open source models under my desk. Like, I do not want any of these giant players to have any of my data. Like I come from the Web3 world and you know, AI is the most centralizing force on the planet. Uh, I really hope that over time people start to realize this and potentially want to seek out maybe not the easiest and most dopamine inducing product, but the hopefully the product that either respects their data privacy, puts them in community or even better. I would love to see people running their own, uh, their AIs under their desk like me, because it's not that difficult. Mm. I, I just wanted to uh, chime in with the, the term anthropomorphism that kind of has been coming on uh, quite often. 
And at the point at which uh, AI is isolating or creating a companionship, maybe it's not isolating, but creating a companionship with this AI interface and you are kind of interacting as though that's the friend and you don't need anybody else. And I think that's where I see the struggle. I think parents have the struggle because kids are getting isolated with the social chatbots. They're working in the room. They're not sitting at the table and talking. They're texting. So yes, just as social platforms tend to create an isolation, also cutting down the social capabilities of social communication in in person, I think that human touch is kind of important that it, I don't think AI is going to cause that to happen, but AI is definitely adding to that factor of isolation. And so as I think the others have to, I totally agree with the belonging, learning from the communities. And I think people in AI, at least in corporate world, I have no clue who knows AI, who doesn't, or what they know. So AI is definitely helping them make their step into that learning curve and building their AI literacy to move towards fluency, not really there, but it is doing it well. And I think I love it because it gives them a safe space to learn without declaring they don't know. And then sharing in those communities, I think that is where it's very important. It's a community I really still think is the core for us humans. That's what I would say. So we don't get lost in that anthropomorphic world of, I know what I know. And my friend here, who's a mechanical whatever, algorithm knows as much as I do. And I think you need to break that because it can be disastrous too. I would come at this problem of uh, isolation. I mean, like Johnny said, it's not an AI driven thing. This has just been happening for a long time. And, you know, if you consider AI as, you know, the algorithms that are keeping people on their phones on TikTok and everything, then yeah, that that's another type of AI that is causing that isolation. I think uh, the first way I'd come about it is by teaching responsibility, trying to get people to get more involved in their community and to actually, you know, rise up and, you know, start doing things. And the other big one that we haven't touched on yet that really is the crux of that, I think, is uh, commitment and accountability. A chatbot cannot keep you accountable. If you're trying to learn something and you set a deadline for I need to learn this in this amount of time, the chatbot will just sit there. And if you never interact with it again, then it's not going to hold you accountable. There's no replacing that social pressure of having an instructor, a professor, or a friend that is relying on you for a project, holding you accountable to actually, you know, submit an assignment or to you know, work on your part of the project so that they can also benefit from, you know, your group effort. The theme that I'm hearing is that community is the connective tissue uh, in all of this, I, I kind of go back to so many people are more comfortable, like not talking in person, but texting people. <laughs> um, so being able to have people feel comfortable talking to someone else. Uh, I just remember in terms of hiring people, like having them give me writing samples and they wrote like they texted um, that sort of communication. So you wonder if they talk the same way. Like, how can we get people back together, uh, Stephen, like getting out and being together and interacting organically with one another? Yeah, I'm actually seeing the opposite in communication, actually, because, you know, there are some people I know that are literally just always using ChatGPT when they're writing to me, either email or texting. And it is so frustrating <laughs> or because I can know it's AI and you, know, you see the little M dash and, you know, it's, it's Jaren, but no one ever used that. Uh, before before. You know, BT started doing it, uh, which makes you wonder, like, how did it get into its lexicon of writing it if no one ever used it and now it loves to use it? And, but You know, Stephen, when they started doing Twitter and they everything got like BFF, uh, you know, OMG kind of a thing, that when that started coming into corporate email, and especially when we did a lot of outsourcing, it was terrible. I'm like, what are they saying? I mean, maybe I'm dating myself, but still in an email, when you're writing everything formally, the, and I think that's the same thing what you're referring to is when you have a chat, you know, chat GPT rewrite or the copilot rewrite what you're doing and put it into it. You forget to check because I know it says things. I do it because it frames it easily and neatly. But I read it because it doesn't sometimes, it extrapolates. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, so I think, but uh wanted to add, Monica, that the water cooler effect is still strong mm. and makes so many things happen in a um in a corporate world. Yeah. And and the new kids that I have seen, the new interns that are on rotation, they don't get seem to get it that they need to get up from their seats and talk. Not about texting. Oh, I found this wonderful information in the email. So I know it is not necessarily AI generated, but it's the mindset that we are getting used to learning through it, but not learning how to express it to mm-hmm. one another. Well, that social interaction is very um, important. I don't know, um, like the people that graduated from college and the pandemic hit, so they had never been in an office situation, like a traditional office situation. And, you know, being by the water cooler, having those discussions, and then having to transition to that. I've heard some founders and executives talk about what the transition has been like for them. And it's quite awkward because they haven't had the advantage of having been in the work and the traditional work environment and having sort of the water cooler discussions or at lunch, sitting down with someone or a group of people and having discussions. It doesn't have to be work-related, just having that connection with people at work. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how things evolve over time. And I think it's interesting that the challenge framed that way assumes that there's a return to traditional office work, uh, company, mm-hmm. which, yes, right now that is where the trends are going. But like I've been working remotely since 2014, you know, long before the pandemic, with a brief stint in the office right before COVID in a new job, uh, and then got sent back home again. And the biggest thing that's missing is those unplanned interactions, right? Like I I used to have an office next to the CEO in a company I worked for, and I would hear him yell on the phone about something. And I'd go over and say, hey, you know, that sounds like something that we could solve with some training. Uh, What do you think about this idea? And when you're remote, you have to be intentional about creating those spaces, like creating formalized mentorship programs, creating office hours, um, creating opportunities to come together around new technologies like AI and share what you're learning. Uh, It just, it's, it has to be this much more deliberate, systematic, random interaction, which sounds counterintuitive. um, But assuming that a lot of companies are never going to be back in an office or weren't there in the first place, uh, that's a really important muscle for the corporate world to develop. 